Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues today. We find ourselves in Pennsylvania. The Nike Hot Seat special guest, the executive director of the National Wrestling Coaches Association. He is Mike Moyer. Mike, welcome back. How are you? Thanks for having me, Scott. I'm doing great. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, topic of discussion today, at least one of them, will be the Division One National Duels. You made the decision to cancel them for calendar year of 2018, 2017, 2018, as it were. Talk to us about making that decision. Well, it was a really tough decision. Um, the the Essentially what we've done is we've suspended it for one year so we can have a lot more discussion around the format you know what what what's what's so challenging is when you look at the circumstances of our 77 division one programs their circumstances are so varied and so it's really challenging trying to get all the coaches to agree to a standardized format and you know the lens that many of them look through is just so different so you know we we've we've accomplished so much through this event you know last year for example we had the largest crowd in the history of Oklahoma State to watch a sporting event in Gallagher Iba Arena. We had, you know, international companies that were investing in wrestling as naming rights sponsors. We had a lot of great dual meets at other locations. You know, some of the other um, uh, duels that we had, I was at the, the Lehigh Rutgers duel, which was a great crowd. And, you know, all around the country, um, we this, this, this event, did a lot to really promote and showcase our sport. But there were really two primary challenges. The one, of course, is just trying to come up with a standardized format that everyone would agree to. And, and the second big one is more and more Division I conferences have these pre-existing media rights agreements. And so the challenge we have is to appease the naming rights sponsors. They're looking for television commercials and visibility on television and and uh, sponsorship opportunities in the venues themselves and more of these conferences have these pre-existing media rights agreements that that encompass so much more than just home intercollegiate competitions they now encompass you know uh, uh, exhibitions and practices and virtually anything that happens on their campuses and so it wouldn't be so challenging if it was just one network so two years ago when the big 10 teams hosted you know all the big 10 teams are partnered with the big 10 network so it still works but when you go to the non-big 10 campuses you could be dealing with three or four or five different networks and it makes it virtually impossible to uh to do the sponsorship fulfillment part of it we're talking with Mike Moyer about the national duels and the decision to at least cancel the 2017 2018 uh, national duels, Division One. The multi, uh, multi level uh, division uh, national duels are still uh, still in, uh, going to happen, I understand. And, and it's been very successful finding a home and, and uh, making it a destination point for many schools and athletes. How difficult was it to make coaches happy with scheduling and, and while also keeping fans happy, Mike? Well, again, our coaches are under enormous pressure, and many of them to compete at the very highest level. And so, again, their 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 needs are it, they're very diverse, and and um, it's just you know it's just challenging. You know, can we reach a compromise? I think absolutely we can. We just need a lot more dialogue. You know, we need a lot more communication, and and uh, you know, we just. We didn't want to be putting a square peg through a round hole, so we felt it was best to just suspend it for a year and to see if we can work diligently over this next year to come up with something that makes more sense, that we can get more more, um, more of our top coaches to buy into. Really, not more of them, all of them. For it to really be a national dual meet championship, we need participation by all of them. And, and so there's more work to be done, and we're committed to doing that, and you know, hopefully we can we can uh, reach a compromise that everybody feels good about. I know it's a fan favorite, Mike, and I know you understand that, but it's it's got to be something we intend to bring back. With all the changes, maybe it had a sour taste in some of the fans' mouths, but that Okie State and Penn State duel was literally one of the most hyped duel meets of the last five to ten years. Yeah, it was like Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, can't, I can't tell you how many people around, you know, around the country were getting together. High school coaches were bringing their teams over and – you know, alumni groups getting together. And I mean, it, it had 
the intended impact that we were looking for. And, and we just, it's a great idea. It, it needs more work. Uh, you had mentioned something earlier about the multi-divisional national duels, which we do in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And uh, that's where we have the five collegiate divisions, all divisions other than division one. One of the things that was interesting about that, just as a as, as an interesting fact, last year, 43 of the 85 college teams that were in the multi-divisional national duels have been established just since 2001. So that event is another great opportunity to really showcase, you know, the growth, the phenomenal growth of college wrestling. You know, we've just added our 170th new college wrestling team since 2001, not too long ago. And, you know, people love a great dual meet. And actually, that event, we televise one dual meet from each of the five collegiate divisions uh, on Fox College Sports. And then they'll rebroadcast it a minimum of 10 times each. So we get 50 national broadcasts uh, of some terrific dual meets. So whether it's the non-Division I levels or it's the Division I level, there's no doubt that our sport needs a lot more exciting dual meets, and we need to be able to showcase that on a national stage as best we can. So I agree with you, Scott. We need to do everything we can to bring this back, and we intend to start those discussions at our convention coming up here in early August. Mike Moyer, our guest today. Mike, you talk about the growth. There is one retraction of a program, and that, of course, Boise State. Uh, the NWCA has largely been seen as one of those people and one of those organizations, I should say, that goes around putting out fires or at least attempting to start new programs. This is a fire that's burning in the West. Can we stop it? Yeah, I mean, it always hurts when you lose any college program at any level, but this particular one uh, um, really hurts because we're so fragile in the Northwest to begin with. I think we have over 23,000 high school wrestlers in Idaho and bordering states, and I think we have eight, um, eight four-year college wrestling programs. And, you know, in Idaho now, we don't have a single four-year college wrestling program, and just to the west there in Washington State, we have over 300 high school wrestling teams without a four-year college program, a varsity program. And, 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 and so we're committed at all costs to bringing this program back. And actually, uh, immediately following our interview here today, uh, we have a conference call with, with some high-level people out there in Idaho. And we're committed to however long it takes to bring that program back. We're also committed as a short term measure to trying to get another four year institution out there to start an intercollegiate program, hopefully a men's and a women's program. So at least the high school wrestlers out there have a place to go. It might not be Division One. I'm not suggesting um, it's, it's a lateral move, but at least, you know, it's a it, it's a program that can serve the uh, all the high school wrestlers out there in the Northwest as we work towards bringing the Boise State program back. Mike Moyer, our guest, the executive director of the National Wrestling Coaches Association. Uh, it's a remarkable job, which you've done over the years, and you've been faced with some incredible challenges, but nothing seems too big for you to face head on, Mike, and I uh, congratulate you on a job well done. I wonder sometime how, sometimes how you remain so positive in your approach, but you get to see the end result. You get to see what is being done in the sport that benefits the young people that are, you know, competing in it. After all, isn't that the ultimate goal? And shouldn't that be the ultimate goal of the president of uh, Boise State? Yeah, well, thanks for those kind words, Scott. And, you know, what I would say is our primary, our number one speaking point whenever we go and approach a college president or boards of trustees is that across all three NCAA divisions, wrestling has the largest percentage of first-generation college-bound student of any NCAA sport. So it's more than just a college wrestling program. What it represents is an opportunity for countless young aspiring high school wrestlers to have a chance to obtain a college degree that otherwise would not have the chance. And that's why this decision in, in, at Boise State is so egregious. You know, the, the notion that it's a state funded school, it should have some obligation to to provide activities that are deeply embedded in the culture of its state. And, the high school, the youth, the grassroots wrestling community in Idaho is as organized as anywhere I've ever been in the country. And it's just hard to believe that one person, in this case, the president at Boise State, all by himself with really a process that had no transparency, was able to just eliminate 50 some years of tradition 
without any checks and balances. And we just we know we're on the right side of this issue. It's going to take some time to bring this program back, but we're committed to taking, you know, to being in it as long as we need to be in it to get this program back as well as some other opportunities out there. Let's talk a little bit about the situation at Penn State. Co- um, Mike, I call you, I still call you coach periodically. I apologize, but uh, once a coach, always a coach, I guess. Um, let's talk a little bit about that situation at Penn State. June 30th, Cale Sanderson uh, had his uh, contract go null and void. In other words, it was dead. It was not renewed. It's still in negotiation some seven days later. They haven't uh, been able to come to an agreement. That's, in, in my estimation, it's a bit of an insult to Cale Sanderson for the job he's done over the last eight years there. What are your thoughts? Well, certainly Coach Sanderson has just done an unbelievable job there. I mean, it's, 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 it's just, you know, it's beyond words, you know, what he's been able to accomplish there. I'm not familiar with the situation at all, uh, but, but certainly, you know, I can't imagine that Penn State, you know, wants, wants Coach Sanderson to go anywhere but there. And, you know, you have a hard time believing they're not going to work that out. Um, but. Um, I said there are no words to express how grateful we are for what Coach has done at Penn State and how he's just elevated, you know, Division One wrestling all around the country, you know. So, so, you know, best wishes to him to work that out. I I can't imagine that they're not going to work that out, and I guess time will tell. He's at one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in his base salary, and I got to believe that uh, he's he's wanting a little bit more for him and his staff for the job that he's done. Uh, his athletes surely uh, want that, and so do most of the wrestling fans in Penn State. But it is, after all, a state school, and they've got to meet budget. Um, it seems that they might want to take some football money and throw it Mr. Uh, Sanderson's way. Would you agree with that? Well, we, of course, again, we advocate. We want our coaches to, to make the best living they can, you know, at every school around the country. But, you know, certainly there are challenges out there in intercollegiate athletics with the business model itself. and and uh, But... But, you know, certainly no one can argue with the job that Coach has done there. And, and as I said, I, I'm sure that, that, that there'll be a happy ending there in, in Happy Valley, you know, for, for Coach Sanderson. And we certainly hope there is because he's done just, you know, what he's done, not just for Penn State, but for wrestling in general has just been extraordinary. Mike, how important have junior colleges and community colleges become to the, the landscape of wrestling? They're very important. You know, one of the things, one of the phenomenons out there is that the the um, the the uh, student loan debt is going through the roof, and and you know, students many across the country just can't afford college, and the community college option is a much more affordable way to at least get those general education requirements um, completed, and so I think that's we consider low hanging fruit. I suspect we're going to see a lot of community colleges adding sports particularly wrestling, um, as a way of providing a much more cost-effective option uh, before you get to the more expensive four-year option. You know, a tuition cost, for example, let's, let's use Highline Community College, coincidentally, in Des Moines, Washington, uh, Des Moines, Washington, out on the West Coast, costs about $4,000 a year or 4400 bucks for out-of-staters. They can go there for two years, get an associate degree, and transfer toward it to a, uh, a four-year program. They can really do that at any, at any time with all credits transferring. i got to believe that uh, guys like Coach Norton and, uh, and many others uh, would, would endorse the idea of this being a good launching on point to help get students acclimated to the collegiate life. Would you agree with that? Of course, of course. And again, with wrestling, with so many first-generation college-bound students, that, that community college option might be a, 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 um, a good first step, you know, if, if, if some of them don't necessarily have the academic background or the money, you know, the, the money to go to that four-year school. Uh, it's certainly a much more cost-effective option. We've been talking with Mike Moyer about a broad range of topics, most notably, of course, the, the cancellation of the 2017-2018 Division I National Duels, whether it was a Bulls series or just a traditional uh, uh, National Duels event, as it has been in the past. We do hope that it will resurrect or be resurrected in years to come. Mike, thank you for the time and the candid answers. We appreciate that, and I hope you enjoyed your time in our Nike hot seat. No, I appreciate it, Scott. Thanks for all you do to promote wrestling as well.